I bought these Valentino flats secondhand in new condition and thought that I would be proactive and have the leather soles protected. I looked up a local cobbler with quite good reviews and entrusted them with my new babies. And um, yeah, the things didn't turn out well. There's black grease on the elastic, a scuffed leather heel, sloppy edge paint, paint on the leather, and worst of all, they acquired two slices through the leather uppers, of which they tried to repair. But on the bright side, they weren't damaged on the top. No one will notice the sloppy work, the scuff, the slices, they're all on the side. So now we have a video out of it and I dug into the archives of my past life as a traditional artist and retrieved some of the experience I had with painting on textiles. So leather loves acrylic paint, which is lucky for us because it's the easiest paint to use out of the main paint types. Acrylic is water-based and it's flexible. On this project, I'm going to use craft acrylic because it's cheap and I don't have to worry about wasting paint since I will be a little rusty. So we could go two ways with this. We could purchase some ready mix colors and mix them to match or we can go full tilt and mix from scratch. And I figured that mixing from scratch would be the most fun. So when painting leather, things can get a little tricky with the different finishes that leather can have. Now if you're dealing with a more treated leather, a waxy leather, or a patent leather, or like, you know, leather with a bit of shine, it would require a more invasive prep, possibly sanding and possibly a toothy primer of some sort. However, by the look and feel of these, I can tell they will accept acrylic paint without much prep. And for supplies, I have a surface on which to mix the paint. I chose a container that I can close to prevent it from drying out. I'm using a brush and I chose this flat guy because it's the only brush I have. And for colors, I'm using burnt umber, titanium white, cadmium yellow, crimson red, and ultramarine blue. And in my opinion, this is a very good base set to pretty much get a lot of the colors on the color wheel. Not neons, but a very wide gamut. I'm using rubbing alcohol and alcohol-free baby wipes and q-tips and water. I grabbed a spray bottle to mist the paint to keep the paint fluid. That was very helpful, so I do recommend a spray bottle. So starting off, I am going to wipe down the shoes with the alcohol-free baby wipes as an all-over initial cleanse. We need to remove any possible oil because water and oil do not mix. If you try and paint a water-based paint on top of oil, the oil could keep the acrylic the water-based paint from adhering. And it looks like whatever they used on the heel is coming off and that's fine because it was so sloppy and I didn't like the color. And they got something on the elastic and so I'm going to try and get this off. And it's not budging, so let's try alcohol. I'm not going to worry about it because I don't want to hurt the integrity of the elastic. But I do wonder if 
yeah wow the alcohol is really getting the paint or shoe polish or whatever they put on the heel off which is great So let's do one last wipe down. And now let's get really detailed and prep the areas where about to paint so I would use alcohol on a q-tip here and yeah some of their touch up paint is coming off Next, the fun part. Let's mix. There is a lot to color theory, but an overview here is that red and white will give us pink, blue will cool us down, and yellow will warm us up, and then umber will darken us up. It's actually really interesting that like if you mix blue and umber, you can get a rich black. So let's go ahead and check out the color we have so far. I'm going to take this little piece of paper and paint on it and let it dry and let's compare.
and it is a little too pink. Let's go ahead and try this next watch here. You know, we're like really close, but I still feel like it just needs to be warmed up a little bit. All right, let's check it out now. You know, like, I think this is pretty darn good. I think this is going to work for what we need. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how close we matched. So let's get to painting. Let's see where we're gonna start out. I, yeah, let's go ahead and do this heel here where there was a scuff and we got the scuff off, but when they scuffed it, it took away some of the, the leather color. So let's go ahead and start with a really thin coat and you're going to want to do thin coats versus thick coats because you're going to the thinner the coats the more of the leather texture that you will keep so let's start off slow and remember that this is going to dry down a little darker it oxidizes I'm going to dry my brush now so that we can do some blending some dry brush blending which is going to be used a lot so kind of like if you were blending out eyeshadow you're just gonna bring the color out and diffuse it so you don't want to add color to that point you want to just diffuse it around the corners and it seems like this is covering really well And it is going to be, looks like a matte finish, and we'll take care of that later. I have an idea for that. This is what I've been waiting for. <laughs> so there is 
something that I've seen before that you can use to fill in leather, which I've never used. I know it exists, but for this project, I'm not going to worry about it. I just wanted you to be aware that it exists in case you ever need it for repair. I am going to concentrate on the very center right now and get a decent coverage since there is so much damage and let's go ahead and feather the paint out and diffuse the edges. Looking at this closer, I'm going to try and blend it a little bit more with this baby wipe. Just kind of gently brushing around the paint. And it is pretty dry now, but I'm just seeing if maybe I can pick up a little bit because it feels just a tad thick. So let's go ahead and get this, get a finish on top of this paint and see how it looks. So this is a Liquitex high gloss varnish and it's definitely not a glossy shoe so I'm wondering if I can dilute it to try and get it a more satin finish and it says not to dilute with water on the label but I'm gonna do it anyway because I know that it's water based and it's just way too glossy I know that there is a satin finish available in this but I didn't think about picking it up and this is something that I had around the house, so. A little drop will do it. And let's get some water. Let's see what we can do here. Let's check this out and see what kind of a finish it dries down to. I'm just gonna go right in. So, thin layer, wipe my brush off a little bit and I'm going to basically do the same thing, feather it out. To be on the safe side, I'm just going to stipple around the edge just to maybe give it a little bit of texture to blend it out a little more, but it looks like it's drying down really well.
let's see what we get tomorrow in natural light. I think these turned out really well. Here is the heel that we did that had the scuff. It's looking really good. I'm very pleased. The cuts still noticeable because of the texture change from the cuts but as far as the color I think it looks pretty good a little bit of a white cast still I can see that but not bad at all I hope you guys found this interesting and learned some things and thanks for hanging out with me I will see you again next time